So here we are, barely getting used to 5G. And now the tech world is already talking about 6G. Now 6G isn't just about faster internet. It's about revolutionizing connectivity in ways we can barely imagine. We're talking terahertz frequencies, speeds 100 times faster than 5G, and virtually zero latency, which means instant data transfer, no lag, and a whole new level of real-time communication. So imagine holographic calls, so realistic it feels like the person is in the room with you. And of course, there eventually would be AI-driven smart cities that react instantly to changes, and even brain-computer interfaces that could allow thoughts to control devices. Many companies want this because 6G is expected to power fully autonomous AI. Quantum computing networks and immersive virtual worlds. But the tech is still in early research stages. And experts predict we won't see real 6G networks until around 2030. There are also big challenges like energy consumption infrastructure costs, security risk. So while 6G might sound like science fiction today, we all know how that goes. It's closer than we think. And when it does arrive, it's going to change everything again. And when it does arrive, I have a sneaking suspicion that so will another outbreak. All right, so let's talk about Arthur Furstenberg, who is a researcher and activist who's known for his ideas about electricity, wireless technology, and its impact on life. Furstenberg is best known for his book, The Invisible Rainbow, A History of Electricity and Life, where he lays out this theory. And that theory is that the rise of electrical technology from the first telegraph wires to today's wireless networks has fundamentally changed the natural world with each new innovation and has been affecting human health and even the environment ever since. So what he does is he traces the history all the way back to the 1800s when electricity was first introduced on a large scale and links it to the emergence of various health conditions, suggesting that our bodies, once tuned into the Earth's natural electromagnetic fields, are now overwhelmed by artificial radiation. He even connects major historical disease outbreaks to the rollout of new electrical infrastructures from the installation of radar and radio waves to the arrival of cell towers and Wi-Fi. Of course, mainstream science largely dismisses his claims, arguing there's no concrete proof that electromagnetic fields cause widespread harm. And we should all know better than to trust or appeal to authorities such as the World Health Organization since they're the ones who want to be the authorities on this topic of EMF radiation affecting human health. But first, Furstenberg and his supporters believe we've underestimated the biological impact of constant high frequency exposure 
whether you agree with him or not, his work focuses on asking the question, what is the long-term cost of living in an electrically saturated world? And with 5G, 6G and beyond on the horizon, are we heading toward a future full of electromagnetic chaos? And we already have enough of that as it is. Now, Furstenberg's central argument in The Invisible Rainbow is that electricity isn't just a convenience. It's an environmental force that has fundamentally altered life on Earth. He suggests that before humans started electrifying the planet, all living organisms were tuned into the Earth's natural electromagnetic fields, like the Schumann resonance, which is a low frequency electromagnetic wave generated by lightning and the atmosphere. But as we introduced telegraphs, power lines, radio waves, and then later Wi-Fi and cellular networks, we flooded the planet with artificial electromagnetic radiation, EMR, disrupting the way our bodies and the natural world function. So one of Furstenberg's most controversial claims is that historical disease outbreaks have coincided with major advancements in electrical technology. For example, he points out that in 1889, when the world's first global electrical power grids were established, the first recorded cases of what we now call influenza pandemics appeared. He also highlights 1918's Spanish flu, which emerged right after the expansion of global radio networks. Fast forward to 1957, when the introduction of powerful radar technology coincided with the Asian flu pandemic. And in 1968, when the launch of military grade satellite systems coincided with the Hong Kong flu. According to Furstenberg, these aren't just coincidences. And I think he's right about that. He believes that new electromagnetic exposures weaken the immune system, making populations more vulnerable to viral infections. Now, 5G began rolling out in 2018, 2019, and we all know what coincided with that. Now, you know, lately I've been having suspicions that it was never about a virus and it was always about radiation, but I'll get to that in a moment. So. As technology progressed, so did Furstenberg's concerns. He argues that cell phones, Wi-Fi, and 5G networks expose us to electromagnetic frequencies that our bodies never evolved to handle. He cites research suggesting that constant exposure to EMR can lead to symptoms like chronic fatigue, headaches, insomnia, heart problems, and even neurological disorders. He also points to studies on animals and plants, claiming that birds, bees, and trees show signs of distress, such as erratic behavior, declining populations, and unexplained die-offs in areas of high electromagnetic pollution. Something that also ramped up after 2019, right? Remember those stories during lockdowns? He believes that what we call electromagnetic hypersensitivity, EHS, is a real and a growing condition affecting many people. 
even if mainstream medicine hasn't officially recognized it. And I have to be honest, when you see people who are electromagnetically hypersensitive, they may come across as a bit off, like maybe a little crazy, but that's because the frequencies are driving them crazy. And I know that there are many of you out there who can feel the effects of these things from time to time. Maybe it's as subtle as dry skin or itchiness, maybe a slight headache, maybe it's hard to sleep. All possible indicators of radiation sickness, to put it bluntly. Now, Furstenberg goes on to argue that electricity has damaged ecosystems in ways we barely understand. And he claims that urban trees are dying at accelerated rates due to cell tower radiation and that bee colonies already struggling due to pesticides are further harmed by EMR exposure, disrupting their navigation and reproduction cycles but we already knew that didn't we we knew that years ago but it didn't stop us right he believes that whales and dolphins stranding themselves on beaches could be linked to electromagnetic pollution interfering with their natural sonar essentially he warns that our electrified world is silently reshaping nature and we might not notice the full effects until it's too late. Now we know very well that electricity and wireless technology are not completely safe. While critics argue there's no definite proof that EMR is harmful to people at everyday levels, like Furstenberg says, just because something is invisible doesn't mean it's harmless. When you compare EMF radiation sickness symptoms to those of a pathogen infection, you will find striking similarities. Both conditions can cause fatigue, headaches, and flu-like symptoms making it difficult to distinguish between them. And the only thing is that their underlying causes and symptom patterns are very different. So you have fatigue and weakness, both conditions that can leave a person feeling drained and exhausted. There's headaches. People suffering from EMF exposure and viral infections report frequent headaches, sleep disturbances, insomnia or disrupted sleep patterns can occur in both cases, brain fog and dizziness, difficulty concentrating, confusion, and dizziness are common in both conditions. Muscle and joint pain, Many viral infections cause body aches, and some EMF-sensitive individuals report similar pain. Heart issues. Now, this is important. Increased heart rate, palpitations, or irregular heartbeat can be seen in both EMF exposure and certain infections, like the one we were dealing with during the pandemic. And both EMF exposure and viral infections can weaken the immune system, making the body more vulnerable to illness. Now, how can you tell the difference? Well, if you have a fever, chills, or respiratory symptoms, it's more likely to be a viral or bacterial infection rather than EMF sickness. But if symptoms get worse near electro electronic devices if the symptoms get worse around Wi-Fi routers or cell towers and they improve in nature or away from technology it could be EMF sensitivity 
pathogen infections often come with inflammation and immune responses like swollen lymph nodes and high white blood cell counts, whereas EMF sickness does not. So that's another way of possibly confirming that. I think the matter here is that because EMF sensitivity is not officially recognized by mainstream medicine, many of its symptoms can be mistaken for chronic fatigue, anxiety, or even viral illnesses or mental disorders. On the other hand, some researchers speculate that constant exposure to electromagnetic fields could weaken the immune system, making people more susceptible to infections. So either way, the EMFs don't help. While infections follow a, they follow a clear biological cause and effect pattern. EMF sickness is still debated with some claiming it's a real physiological condition and some thinking it's a psychosomatic response. So what do you think? Could modern technology be silently affecting our health? Or is this just another case of paranoia? Let me know in the comments below. That's going to be all for now. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Woodward TV is also available on Rumble. Follow me on Instagram at jwoodward. Everyone have a great day. Stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.